here we are in a nice fresh map and today I'm going to do a tutorial on how to make splines from track and groundworks in Railroads Online. In today's episode we will cover making straights and starting off your groundworks and also how to get your track aligned to the platforms so that you're the correct distance away from the platforms and you are equal with the platforms. Now this is a new map, but I have opened up the map, saved the map, and then taken the map into the rows editing tool and done a smart tree replant, which actually removes trees from the spots where you don't want them, like here at the start. Um, whenever you're about to edit, it is a very good idea to go into the options menu, the graphics, and turn the foliage to low. So we can very easily see the ground and the terrain and the bits that are flat and where we want to build the track. To get your groundworks slightly up off the ground, we need a constant grade and we need to lift it up in the air some and place a tiny little ramp. And from the face of the ramp, we can work out how deep we want to make our groundworks. And I reckon about there. It's about two inches deep. And we will click in a single segment spline to there. And then we'll come back over here and remove the little ramp we made so we don't accidentally click on it again. Now we'll need to put some groundworks along the front here and again this is a single segment spline and the reason why you use a single segment spline is there's no Z randomization. Um, the Z randomization prevents Z fighting and again let's place another one out here single segment spline. Now we have a spot which is about two to three inches off the ground, which is not too far off the ground, to start building our track on. And while we're here, we'll run another one out this side here as well, because we want the track to go past in a nice straight line. We can remove this first one we placed. It's in our way now. Uh, something I always do as well is I will make over to here and then I will put a very tiny little short piece of groundworks here hidden away in the trees and the grass. And what this piece here does is any time I want to edit the tracks that are here because later on I will sink the ties into the groundworks and delete this temporary groundworks that I use to place the track down with. This gives me a sample height of where I laid the track at. Okay, let's get rid of some of the trees out of the way here because we don't want them in our straight. Okay, now to get the track to line up evenly with the platform, We'll place down a single segment spline again. Single segment splines always lay straight. And if we're looking at the left hand side there, I'm trying to line up the edge with the leg of the platform. And you can see there, there's a bit. And there we go. We'll click it in there. And then we'll grab another single segment spline and connect it up. And we'll move down here and do the exact same thing again. Try and get it to line up with just that little bit in the side. You can see there I've got it lined up. But this one here is still not straight, so we do it one more time. Snap it to the end of the previous track. And again, we line it up so that just that little coloured bit on the end of the rail is sticking in. 
And now we can see our distance there and come back up and compare it to here. And that looks pretty straight. Actually, it could be better. So we'll do it again. Snap to the existing track. Put out to the furthest it'll go that it still reaches the end. And we'll try again. When you're happy that that distance there is the same as the distance where you first put it in, we can cement that in with a cross track. That tells us that we're now parallel to the platform. Remove the rails that we first put in because they're wonky all over the place. Switch over to normal track, build across the top, you connect to the start, connect to the end. That forces it to be parallel to the cross track. And this is only temporary track and we'll mark it to just the end of the And now we'll take another cross track because this will be the end of our build area. <clears throat> Remove these rails out of the middle. We've just basically transferred that cross track to the end. Now we can come along and put in a track along here. That should be parallel to the platform. And I'm putting it in at seven ties length and you can see when you start here, if you pull it out, you get one tie, three ties, five ties, six, and then seven. And then as soon as you go from that point of six to seven, the rails will stick out past the end of the ties. And you want to put it in on that seventh tie. And the reason for that is when we get to the end, we'll turn around and we'll look back up the track and you'll see why we do it at seven. We're actually going to go a little bit short with this one because we want it to end here. And finish it off with a right click. All the spacings between the ties are even when you use a seven tie spacing. So we'll put another cross track on this end. Now this is something that is tricky and most people don't know how it's how it's done is we'll now work back across what we just put in, connect to the start, connect to the end and now we'll put on the turn off the alt lock so that it moves freely. Now we'll snap the decking rail to the joints of the normal track. We don't need to build across the top of the. Now, before we right click to end the spline, we'll go back into the G menu, G menu and select rails. Now, if you start out here at the side, click and hold the left mouse button, you can now wipe over the track and not have it delete anything but what you wanted to. And we want to delete the normal rail out from in amongst it and I've still got the left mouse button held and you can see it's deleting the track out but it's not actually placing a segment down. Let's come to the end, right click now to end the spline and we don't have any normal track in amongst it. And we have it evenly lined all the way along the edge, very nicely parallel to the edge of the track. Now we can delete this first little bit and we are left with a cross track with a parallel line all the way to the end. 
Okay, now to build back the other way, we start again here at this cross track that we've got at the start. Click to the start, click to the end, turn on the alt lock, seven tie spacings. And it is very important when you're placing down track that every single segment of the track you place is the same length, and that's why you count the ties. And we'll come out to here. And we'll do the same at the other end. We can now remove this cross track. We're finished with it. Get rid of this tree. And this tree here's in the way as well. Okay, and if we look at this cross track, we can see that we actually have the first track that we build running over the top of it. Again, if we start out here with the rail tool, hold left mouse button and wipe it over the cross track, it will delete the track out of the middle without deleting the cross track. Select some normal rail, build it over the top. A seven tie length. And right click to finish the spline. We can come back and delete the cross track that we used to start the straight off with. And there you can now see that we have got a perfectly straight track that is parallel to the unload platform. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to cover is how to put a parallel track. We'll put a parallel track beside this. The first thing we want to do is put some groundworks over there. So we'll come down here and right in the middle of this groundworks, we'll take a sample from here with constant and we'll do just another single segment spline. And the same again, we'll work back this way. Single segment spline, run to the end. And put in a, another single segment spline. And we'll go all the way down past the platform down here near the spawn area with this one. Because this will be our, our re-rail track so that we can get the cars out of the yard without needing to actually drive in there and connect them to get them out. You can put them all here on a nice straight section outside the spawn area. We need to remove a couple of trees out of here because they're going to be in our track. And this one here. This one as well, he's in the way. Okay, now to build a parallel track, the easiest way to do it is to again use cross tracks. We'll put one here and we'll put one here. Now, most people haven't realized it, but these cross tracks do have a direction. And give me the picture, here we go. There's the picture. You can see on that picture that cross track one, that's this one here, has got a direction that goes this way. Cross track two has a direction that goes this way. Now, if we try and build off of cross track two, we'll put a piece of track in here and we'll see what it does. 
turn on the alt lock and we'll just put full length segments for this bit so that we can see where it goes. Way down at the end, just so the other so this normal track will be far enough. Finish the spline in. Now, if we put in a cross track here, somewhere here it'll give me a link. There's a link. And now, if we put a cross track in here, let's see if we're parallel. And you can see that. Oh, look at that. We're not. We did not make a parallel track. And that's because. We need to build from track number three, which turns it around the other way. Building from track number two causes it to skew off to the side. So we'll remove that because it didn't work and we'll take away the track. Now there's two ways you can put on that that number three track, if we want to be nice and even at this end, we can build another crossover here on the end, delete that one and put it in facing the correct way. Now the arrow on this one faces this direction and when we build along it, We will put in the seven tie spacings this time because it will be parallel. So you can see a little bit of Z fighting there between the ground works. That tells you that your ground works is all nice and level when you get Z fighting. Of course, we won't be keeping this ground works. This is just something to build the track on so that we can get the track in the right place. It is much more important to get the track in the right place than it is to get the ground works in the right place. The ground works is only decoration on a finished track. all the way to the end. I go right click to finish the spline. Now we'll come back and we'll do a check to make sure that we did actually get parallel. Actually while we're on our way back we will grab this car from here and we'll check to make sure that we are within the distance that we can re-rail to here and there we go we can re-rail to this track. Run back along where we've built, keep looking at the track as you go and it'll stay above your head. And we want to put it on this bit of track. And right click to drop it down so that we can check our distances and as you can see you can move between the platform and the rail car and not fall between the two. That means you're at a good enough distance and there is a decent amount of gap there so that when the larger pieces of rolling stock get added to the game, it'll still be enough of a distance away that you won't clip into the platform. Okay, we'll go back up the end here and we'll do our check to make sure that we did actually make two parallel tracks. We're using two more cross tracks, one on the end of here one on the end of here and we can see look at that we have got parallel tracks 
we can now remove them that we've done our check. Now the next thing we need to be able to do is we need to be able to get from this track over to this track, which means we're going to need some kind of a lane change. So we're going to need a, and I reckon this one. Now this is tricky. Sometimes when you put it in, it'll actually go back under your feet, but if you get just the right angle, it went under my feet. So we'll just try again at a new position. There we go, now it went in, and you can see that I've actually put it over the top of the existing track. We'll remove the one that shouldn't be there. And if we select the rail tool, hold left mouse button from out here and wipe it over the top of the cross track, we can remove the track out of the middle. And we've got a little tiny segment here that we need to fill back in again. It's fine to put in short segments of track if they're between two link points. They will not get a kink in them. But if you try and put in short segments of track on their own, there is a high likelihood that they will kink. Now, because we've put in cross-track spacing to a cross-track spacing, to get back up for it to link, you need to put a cross track back this way and we'll remove some of these. And this is just temporary so that we can make sure we've got a line up. And you can see that will now line back up with this track with one cross track spacing here equals cross track to cross track. So we will remove some of these and that one, and on the end of here, we will put a cross track. Now we can delete this switch and we can build back along this way into the turnout. Now, there's no set number of degrees to use here, but this is just from trial and error. And we want to not quite be full track, so just slightly short of a seven tie length. The first segment is three. Second segment is 7.25. Third one is 7.25. And you can see there we meet up nicely. We can turn off the alt lock so that we can snap it to the end and then build over the cross of that cro top of that cross track, which makes the curve go smooth. Now we can right click and finish that spline. Remove the co cross tracks we used to start and end on. And there we go, we have a nice smooth transition into the switch track. And we're going to need to do the same on the other end of the track. Remove our cross tracks off the end. Oh, let me delete it. Okay. We need a little bit more groundwork built out this way. So again, a single segment spline and a sig single segment spline out this way. Actually, that one didn't click in as a single segment. I accidentally double clicked it, so I will remove it. And there's that second segment. That had Z randomization in it, and we don't want that piece. It's no good for building track on. It's not that bad to have Z randomization in your track if that's what you're after. If you don't mind having little bumps, and this is something that happens. Also, on there, this here was track that was built. The top line has got a long single length spline for the groundworks. 
the second example has got 10 segments and it was put in at constant grade and then the track built on top of it and you can see that it goes up and down, up and down, up and down all the way along. And then the third example is with the track built directly on the terrain on a flat area like where we're at at the moment. And you can see that it's all 0%, there's no grades on there at all. Um, and while we're here, I'll also show, not that one, this one. That's the layout to turn back on to connect switches in parallel lines on the turnouts. It's six cross tracks down the track, one cross track to cross over, and then the switch back the other way. And then here in the middle, there'll be a one tie segment to join them together. That gives a wider spacing than having the two turnouts connected straight onto, the two, onto another turnout. Okay, now to run this one back the other way, we're going to have to put in a cross track. This gives us our distance apart we need to be. And a cross track on the end. Oh, need to be on rails. Now we will try and keep all our switches on the left hand side through here. And because that gave us our spacing here before, it meets up back neatly again. And if you remember, we are switch track distance of parallel line, which means we need to put a switch track in there. I mean, a cross track. Back the other way, which has us nicely lined up here. Remove the rail that's built in between the... track on the end and you can see we've got an overlap here so we will remove that bit of track now we'll do the same as what we did there before we'll cross the cross track first section out is three and we go to 7.25, 7.25, turn off the alt lock, snap it to the end, and then snap it to the end of the cross track. Right click to finish the spline. And because this is a straight line, we can just connect between here and here to fix up the missing piece of track. Smoothly in, smoothly out. Now, something I do remember we missed down this end here is this tiny little gap here. And to fix that tiny little gap, we're actually going to remove that bit of track there. And because, again, this is a straight line, we can snap, start snap to the end. And, oh, look at that. We've been left with a nasty length With a, with a gap, and I don't like gaps, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove that little straight there. I'm going to start here and build over the top of this straight. So this is the double up of track put on the alt lock, and I'm going to build seven. Turn off the alt lock, snap to the end of that one. And then I'm going to snap to this one here. So I've actually built, I've overlapped the track, one at this end and one at this end. And because this is into a curve, the first and last segments of the spline do not match the curve. Now I'm going to pull out the delete tool and very carefully look at the track and just on this right hand edge here at the top, and I've deleted the wrong one because it's this bit of track. And it doesn't matter which one of the duplicates we delete here because they're both straight. Now, again, we've left a gap here in the track. So to fix a gap, we need to come back here to this segment and connect to that one, connect to that one, and then connect to the next one. 
And now it's a little bit easier to see that we have got a cord from the overlap track. We can remove the cord. And down here we can also see the cord on this one and we can delete the cord. And now we're back to smooth track again and there's actually four splines in there, which is a bit of a mistake. Really, I should have pulled it out and built the whole segment of track again to reduce the number of splines that we've got. Okay, and there we go. We have got two parallel tracks, a part of unloading lane and a passing lane that is parallel to the platform, all level with the terrain. So there's no grades on this track at all because we don't have any Z randomized groundworks. We can go along and remove the groundworks, all our temporary stuff we built on. Let's me click it, there it goes. And that bit, and that bit. And that bit. And what we're going to do at this end before we delete the last one is we're actually going to make another one of those sample pieces. So we'll nicely in the centre here and off out into the trees where we're not likely to build. Put a single segment spine and then a tiny little bit of the gravel. That gives us a sample at this end if we need to do any track repairs. We know the height that the track was laid at from that sample piece. Now we can do, delete the last segment off of here. Now we want to put on the finished groundworks, and I always go with variable, but you could use constant here. Now as we put place the pointer over this end here you can see that it is lifting up and lowering down and that will set how deep you want to sink the groundwork so if you put it up on top of this one here it will be fully sunk into the, the tie will be fully sunk down into the groundworks but if we move it back just slightly and where it starts to sink and we select that point no it went too high right click before we put in the second and it'll remove it There we go, that's better. And if you look here on the left-hand side, I actually look at the grain of the wood, and you can see that we're on the second large grain on the way down. So that's a guide so that as we're building back, we know that we're staying at the same depth of groundworks. And we just run back and snap them to every joint of the track. And when we get to a cross uh, switch track, we actually put three in the middle. You can see that it won't let me place it too short. So they want to be just past. And you just have to line it up when you go on across the switch. Somewhere close to the middle is good enough. And again, somewhere close to the middle is good enough. Then we can snap to the end. And we can go back to clicking it to every single. You, you could skip and do every second one because it's a straight, it won't make any difference. On a corner though, you need to, if you want to have the groundworks follow the track at the same curve, you need to have a even length on every single segment of groundworks you place to match to, uh, look at this, see this one won't place. And what that actually is, is if we pull it back close, you can see it's disappearing and it's right on the link point. And the only thing we can do is go slightly past the link. So we'll keep moving it out until the link disappears and sort of have it somewhere center and click it in. And now the next one, it won't let me place. So we're gonna have to do the same thing again until we get to the end of the spline. Just pass the link and click it in.
You just got to judge it to be centre. And there we go. And now we're back to clicking to links again. And as we come in on the side, something I like to do, I don't actually put them centre here. I move them slightly to the left and put this one slightly to the left and then we'll click to the centre at the end and we won't put the cross track in on the end. Now to build the last track in, again, we actually, we actually put the mouse pointer on the groundworks. If we put it on top, it will change the height of the groundworks, but if we actually put the arrow on the groundworks, it will copy the height of the groundworks. You can see there the Z fighting between the two. And we'll work our way back down along the straight here. And we went too far. So we go to the next link. This is always a nice straight line. We might change mid, which is no problem at all because it's a straight. We can change in the middle to a double and now we'll do it to a, a third link. On this end, we can do it to the fourth link because we're slowly, gradually increasing. It'll actually let you do that. And because it's on a straight, it won't make much of a difference. And slowly bring it back because we've got a curve here. We want to connect to every segment again so that it follows the curve neatly. Slightly to the left, slightly to the left, finish neat and center in the middle, right click to end the spline. And there we go, we have track that is perfectly in center of the groundworks, the groundworks with the ties sunk down into it. It's perfectly parallel to the unload platform with enough space and low enough so that the when we're unloading it won't hit on the roof because that is a problem if you have your groundworks too deep it'll actually bounce off the roof and you will not sell your item when you bring it to the freight depot and these couple of trees here need to go they're in the way and this one needs to go and this one needs to go and there we have it, a start of the track in place. Now, something that a lot of people do on the end of here, there's a couple of methods I've seen, just something for the switch stand to be positioned on. Some people do it with a piece of groundworks that way. What I like to do is I'll grab the variable and I'll pull it out until the you don't have that squishy looking texture from having too short of a piece and I'll drop it at 10 into the ground and it's got a smooth so it looks like the switch handle is supported by the actual ground and not floating in the air and we'll go do the other one as well and you must choose variable for this because you want the second segment you place to be at a different grade to the first piece when the first piece level which it won't actually be level if we crouch down you can see it actually bulges up slightly and then goes down into the ground and there we go we're done with this section the last thing to do is go to options into the graphics turn the foliage back up so we can see the grass and have a look with the grass turned on. And we have what looks like old three foot rail. 
where the grass is cleared here. There's no grass in the track, but yeah, you got the occasional little bit of grass sticking through, which makes it look quite good. And there we go. And in the next episode, we will deal with making curves and we will connect this here on. I don't normally connect the spawn tracks in, but we will connect it on because we've got a higher ground level here and we'll cover transitions in groundworks. All right, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.